Hi, I'm Mike Robichaud, head of guitar repairs at Long & McQuaid, and I'm going to show you how to restring a steel string acoustic guitar. To restring a steel string guitar, it's important to understand how a pinned bridge works. So, on the inside of the guitar, there's a hardwood plate called a bridge plate. And this adds strength to the top, but it also provides a hard surface for the ball ends of the strings to bear against. A properly installed guitar string goes down through the pinholes and it takes a slight curve and the ball end rests firmly against the bridge plate with the bridge pin holding it and preventing it from coming back up through the hole. The groove of the bridge pin allows the string to pass through without jamming or causing any unnecessary friction. So we can look inside the guitar here uh, with a mirror and we can actually see a properly installed set of strings. All of the ball ends are sitting firmly against the bridge plate. None of them are getting sucked up into the pinholes. None of them are perched on the end of the bridge pins. They're all firmly resting on that hard maple plate that's attached to the guitar's top. And the pins are only there to prevent the ball ends from popping back out through the holes and coming loose again. So the first step is to remove the old string and wind all the tension off. And you can cut it or just disconnect it at the headstock. And you, know, you want to remove the bridge pin. Usually you can just pull it out with your fingers, but if it's a little bit stubborn, your peg winder may have a little notch in it that's designed for pulling bridge pins out. If you don't have that, you can use your wire cutters. Just open them up just wide enough for the bridge pin and very carefully, not to uh, mar the bridge, slide it underneath and just pull up firmly. This is the way most guitar techs do it. Uh, with the bridge pin removed, uh, you can just give the string a little bit of slack to unseat the ball end and bring it out. So again, looking inside with the mirror, we can see as the pin comes out, that releases the ball end. We can actually feed the string into the guitar a little bit just to make it completely loose. And then it's very easy to just pull it back out through the hole. So the string takes a little bit of a curve on the inside and then the bridge pin holds it in place firmly against the, the bridge plate. So the ball ends aren't resting on the end of the bridge pin. It's not even really the bridge pin that's actually taking all of the force. Uh, it's actually the bridge plate on the inside of the top that the strings are pulling against. The bridge pin just keeps the string pressed against the, uh, the front of the bridge. So as you're tuning it up, it doesn't pop out. So now we install our new string. Just uncoil it carefully. Helps to give the, uh, the string a little bit of a bend right before the, the ball end. That'll just help seat it properly inside the guitar. You want to send the string down inside just far enough so that the, the ball end is fully inside the guitar. And now being mindful of the, uh, the groove on the bridge pin, you can insert the bridge pin. It'll hold the string in place and you can give it a little bit of a a little bit of a tug just to properly seat the ball end. Now at this point you can look inside with a mirror or you can just feel inside with your hands and make sure that the uh, ball end is properly seated against the bridge pin. It shouldn't be perched on the end of the pin, it uh, shouldn't be digging into it, it should just be seated nicely on top of the bridge plate. Now put the headstock, so you want to line it up so the string can pass straight through. I should say that there's a number of different ways to wind strings at the tuner. I'm just going to show you the absolute easiest way to do it. So pull the string nice and snug. Now we have to measure the correct amount of slack to put in the string so that we wind up with the correct number of windings around the post. Now for the three base tuners, we want about two, two and a half winds around the post. So we can use the fretboard to measure one fret back. So hold the string snug, grab it at the nut, and draw it back one fret. That'll give you the correct amount of slack for about two, two and a half winds for the bass strings. For the treble strings, you do the same thing, but draw it back about two frets, and that'll give you four or five winds around the post, which is what you want for those three. 
So now with the correct amount of slack measured, you want to hold the string with your pinky and your ring finger and use your index finger to control it, put some downward pressure on it. You can let go with your left hand and start winding up. You always want to wind so that the strings are coming from the center of the headstock out. You never want to have the strings coming up and entering the machine head from the outside of the peg head. You could risk damaging the guitar. You're winding the right direction. The tail comes around. You want to make sure that that tail goes over, over top. All of your windings should be going down. And they should just stack nice and neatly below the one another. You don't want any loose loops or anything like that. As it starts to tighten up, you can place the string in the nut slot. And at this point, you want to double check back at the bridge and make sure that the bridge pins aren't starting to pop out on you. Uh, even if you've done everything right, sometimes just uh, as the string stretches out and tightens up, it, it can cause a little bit of friction and it can drag the, the pegs up just a tiny little bit. If this happens, you should be able to just push them back down with no effort whatsoever. If they're, if they're really tough and really hard to push back down, the ball end might be caught on the end of the pin, in which case you want to take the tension off and go back and, and double check again that you've got it locked in. But you should be able to just push it back down a little bit neatly if, uh, if it starts to lift up. You should never apply a lot of pressure to these things. It should never be more pressure than you could apply with your pinky, really. Uh, the, the bridge pins should, should fit snugly, but uh, they should never have to be forced down in. So I'll wind it up. Once it's, uh, once it's tight enough that I can actually get a musical note out of it, I can grab the string and just give it a light little stretch. Once again, make sure the bridge pins are nicely seated in there. Tighten it up again. Now all the windings are nice and tight at the headstock, and we can clip off the excess. If you like, you can take your cutters and bend that tail up a little bit just to get it out of the way so it doesn't poke you in the finger. And if you want to use a tuner, bring the string up to concert pitch. should be ready to go. So some acoustic guitars have these top loading bridge and they make things really easy. To restring one of these, all you have to do is take the tension off as usual. You're going to want to cut the string in this case. So hold on to it, make sure that there's no tension and clip it off. Unwind it at the headstock. And then the bridge end of things is super easy. You just pull the old string out. Pass the new string through. Sometimes you have to put a little bend in it to help guide it. Make sure that ball end is seated nicely in the back. Bring it up to the headstock. And restring is normal. No bridge pins, no bridge plate, nothing to worry about. Tom Mike Robichaux for Long and McQuaid, and that's how you restring an acoustic guitar.